Hello friends and fellow investigators. Welcome to another Macho Luku video. Today we are looking at a very important case. A case that started Detective Gannon's serious effort into the suspicious deaths of young college aged men. Today we're looking at the strange disappearance of Patrick McNeil, who went missing 25 years ago to the day after a night of fun with his friends on Monday, February 17th. 1997 in the Bronx. The group decided to go to the Dapper Dog, presently the Big Easy. This establishment is located at 1768 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. He was a witness in the bathroom throwing up just before he left the establishment. He was later seen in a disoriented state stumbling and falling into some parked vehicles while vomiting. Other witnesses claim that there was a vehicle double parked outside the Dapper Dog that followed Patrick south on 2nd Avenue. The vehicle was occupied by a man and a woman. This seems very pertinent to the case, as it was also observed by witnesses that after Patrick fell, the vehicle stopped. As Patrick got up and continued south, the vehicle continued to follow him. The last moments uh, the last moment when Patrick was witnessed was when he turned left on 90th Street towards the East River, with the vehicle still on his tail. Patrick's body was found on April 7th, 1997, in the Bay Ridge section of Brooklyn, at the uh, Owlhead Water Pollution Control Plant, near 69th Street Pier at 6700 Shore Road, New York City. This location is roughly 12 miles away from his last observed location in Manhattan. The location of the body does not make sense vis-a-vis -vis his last known location. Patrick was witnessed stumbling and struggling to stay on his feet. For him, for him to travel the 12 miles on foot on that day would have been next to impossible. It is important to also note that if he somehow fell into the East River near where he was last seen, the currents would not have taken him to the location where he was ultimately found. Detective Gannon was able to obtain a partial vehicle plate number from one of the witnesses. The missing person's supervisor would not pay for a plate search, roughly $1,200 in 1997, of the car that was following Patrick. This was a crucial roadblock as the plate could have at least offered some persons of interest in the case. Patrick was found in the water with only his jeans, socks, and boxers on. Even though paradoxical undressing due to hypothermia could have played a role, no mention of hypothermia was mentioned in the coroner's report. You also have to wonder how the current could have removed his jacket and shirt, but not his socks, pants, and underwear. The uh, toxicology report stated that Patrick's blood alcohol concentration was 0 0.16, meaning that his ethyl alcohol level in the, in the blood was 0 0.16, while in some unidentified decomposition fluid, 0 0.18, and the level of 0 0.23 in his brain. The report did not specify from which part of the body the fluid and blood samples were collected. Basically, Patrick showed a level of intoxication to be expected after six drinks. Based on the eyewitness accounts, it seemed like Patrick had some other substance in his system that made him stumble down 2nd Avenue. Both the gallbladder and stomach were empty. The only way this could have happened um, would be if Patrick ate a meal, then vomited, and then died within only a few minutes of, of leaving the bar which would have stopped the digestion process before the gallbladder could start refilling. Detective Gannon personally walked the stretch that Patrick did and did not find any vomit. Patrick was discovered face up in the river, which is very unusual because most drowning victims are found face down. Lividity, the pooling of blood post-mortem due to gravity acting on blood into the uh, dependent capillaries and veins, begins 30 minutes after death and completely finishes at about 12 hours after death. Patrick displayed signs of being in the water for one to two days 
according to the coroner and the photos of the autopsy not 50 days so naturally the question remains where was he for the remaining 48 days and uh, just going back to the lividity it was not consistent with him being in one position for the entire time he was missing the lividity was um, inconsistent with one position of the body but multiple positions Even though the medical examiner's suggestions were those of nothing out of the ordinary and that there was no injuries to the skull, however, on closer examination by Gannon, there were burn injuries found on Patrick's body. There were burns as well as damage to Patrick's upper rear skull area, two side-by-side -side indentations of one half inch in depth were found on Patrick's head. Gannon and his team also recognized clear burn marks on Patrick's body from his head to mid-torso, second and third degree burns around his belly and sides. Patrick's face and upper torso were, were also burned to the point of charring. From the autopsy photos, it was also deduced that there was uh, melted flesh on his right elbow and ear. There was a pattern mark around Patrick's neck. The New York City uh, medical examiner suggested that it could be a ligature mark. There were flex and fibers also found on Patrick's left arm and face. And there was no analysis on their possible origin in the autopsy report. There were fly eggs in the arrested state of development found in Patrick's groin area. Had Patrick fallen into the East River where he then died, then obviously his groin area would have been underneath his boxers and jeans, making it impossible for flies to get to it and lay eggs. It is also important to remember that flies do not lay eggs on deceased human bodies in temperatures under 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And the day Patrick went missing, the temperatures were well below, below 40 degrees. The omission by the coroner, this omission by the coroner, raises a huge red flag there was no effort to bring in an entomologist to assist with the identification of the fly eggs. There was no attempt to identify the contents of Patrick's lungs, even though both lungs were described as above normal weight by the pathologist. As far as the decomposition of the body, Patrick's upper torso and, anter and anterior head had contracted and had a tight leathery look. This was the charred portion of the body. The posterior head and shoulders had a deep red color. Skin slippage here was minimal, and it was likely, according to Gannon and his team, that this red color was the result of first-degree burns and early de decomposition. Patrick's body did not show the type of decomposition consistent with 50 days in a body of water. After looking at all this evidence, ask yourself whether you still believe this was an accidental drowning. It is far more likely that Patrick was stalked, drugged, held indoors for some time, killed and disposed of at Owlhead Pier into the East River. He was discovered about 24 hours later, um, after he was disposed of on April 7th, 1997. Bodies that are dead before ending up in the water do not sink, as the air trapped in the lungs contributes to floating. After looking at the evidence, Dr. Cyril Wecht concurred with Gannon's team that uh, the case of Patrick James McNeil should be classified as a homicide. On March 19, 2009, Gannon and um, Duarte presented his evidence to the NYPD Chief of Special Investigations Division, who said he will confer with the current New York City Chief, Chief Medical Officer and get back to Gannon and Duarte. No reply has been received to this day. Thanks for spending some of your time with me and uh, as we try to uncover what exactly is happening to these victims in urban and uh, wilderness settings. Stay safe out there, guys. I'll see you in my next video.